If Shaq isn't too tall for this car, neither are you. It's actually absurd how long it takes. <sighs> Hello, my name is Alanis King, and this right here is a 2009 Smart 42 Cabrio. It is about the size of my pinky, and it has a wide body kit, a convertible top, and about 70 horsepower. That's right, this guy goes from zero to 60 miles per hour in 12.8 seconds. At least in America, I feel like the Smart for Two is a cultural icon. You can ask anybody if they know what a smart car is, and they do. And I cannot wait to teach you more about this car today. But first, if you like tiny cars with big, cultural footprints, this Smart for Two Cabrio is now available on cars and bids. You can check out more photos, see the full spec list, or maybe even bid on it at the link in the description of this video. Before we get to this Smart for Two, let's talk about why it exists. Smart was born as a city car brand under Daimler, the parent company of Mercedes-Benz. The idea for Smart came around in 1972 when Daimler figured it was time to dream up a tiny, tiny, tiny car to help combat congestion and air pollution in cities. By 1981, Daimler had a true concept city car. Its nickname was an acronym, NAFA, which stands for a very long German name that I considered trying to pronounce for all of you, but I decided against that. I will have our editors write the name on the screen. That long word behind NAFA means short distance vehicle. And that little city car was so adorable. I know I say a lot of things are cute, but you have to admit this thing was cute. Unfortunately for all things cute, Daimler decided that safety for cars that small wasn't there yet. So progress on a city car got put on hold. By 1994, safety was a little better and things picked back up. Daimler partnered with Nicholas Hayek of the Swatch Group, which is a famous Swiss watchmaker. The smart name gets its S from Swatch, its M from Mercedes, and then they added art on the end of it. Smart. Yeah, exactly. They created a concept car, debuted it at the 1997 Frankfurt Auto Show, and then they put out a production model not long after. The Smart for Two became this cute little symbol in popular culture. Smart car became synonymous with small, and throughout the 2010s, celebrities like Simon Cowell, Justin Bieber, and even Shaq were spotted at them. Justin Bieber's smart car apparently said swag car on the back of it, and there's this famous video of Shaq getting into a smart with his knees on either side of the steering wheel with fans and videographers kind of chasing him down. Throughout the 2000s and 2010s, Smart expanded to other things, like the Smart Crossblade, which you will recognize as Doug DeMuro's favorite car, the Smart Roadster, which is mine, the Smart for four, which is for four people instead of two, and eventually the Smart EQ electric nameplate. Smart left the American market in 2019 because we are all obsessed with trucks and SUVs, not tiny city cars like this. But you can still get Smart for twos like this one on the used market, and the Smart Roadster will be available for import in 2028, which is so much sooner than you think. That brings us to this car, the 2009 Smart 42 Cabrio. This car has a one liter, three cylinder engine that is not up here, it's in the back. That engine makes 70 horsepower and 68 pound feet of torque, and the power goes to the rear wheels. And here's a bit of trivia for you. This car actually takes premium gasoline. The gas tank holds 8.7 gallons, but the good news is that you get 41 MPG on the highway, 33 in the city, and 36 combined. This particular Smart for Two also has some aftermarket flair. It's got a Lawrencer branded wide body kit, deep dish wheels, and an aftermarket exhaust. You'll also notice this wonderful yellow decaling around the side and the back. And there's an aftermarket infotainment system and backup camera, which makes this so easy to park, as if it wasn't already. 
This car gets so much attention because of its size. And on paper, that seems really weird because it's so small. But that smallness is a conversation starter. People see this car and they see themselves in it. They start to wonder, can my stuff fit in there? Do other drivers even notice them on the road? Surely this person has another car. How easy must that thing be to park? And maybe I'm just too tall for that thing. But come here, I'll let you in on a little secret. If Shaq isn't too tall for this car, neither are you. Because this car gets so much attention for its size, I figured it would be fun to measure it in Alanis units. I'm about five foot eight, so let's see how it compares. Game begin. Game over. Oh, okay, I gotta get up now. So, I know what you're thinking. Alanis, you're supposed to get in the trunk of every car you drive. And I am supposed to get in the trunk of every car I drive, but this car is small. I do think I could fit in here if I tried. Maybe not, I, I, I couldn't close it, I don't think. I don't think I, I, don't think I wanna put my weight on the back of the car like that. <laughs> so we're not gonna do that. Instead, we're gonna pretend I got in there. Theoretically, I could probably squeeze in there a little bit. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to access different parts of this car. So the cool thing about a Smart for Two is that everything is so easily accessible because this vehicle is so small. That includes the three cylinder engine. So you just lift up the little floor liner down here. There's a little twisty, twisty thingy right here. You twist it and you pull up the cover and you can see the engine, whoa! Inside the Smart for Two is very small. You'll notice I have two seats and everything is very bubbly and round. It's pretty 2010s in here. The only thing that's super modern is this aftermarket infotainment screen. It's got this nice display and a backup camera and everything like that. That replaced the tiny little screen that originally came in the car. But you'll see that I have analog gauges and they stick out from the dashboard. It's really, really adorable. I have this tiny, tiny, tiny rear view mirror. And what's interesting is when you're sitting in this car, you're sitting up and looking down. That is likely has a lot to do with the fact that the engine is behind me. There's really nothing up here. So you just kind of stop. And so everything is right in front of you. It's actually pretty airy in here, even with the convertible top up. I think because everything is so upright, you just have a lot of window space. So it doesn't feel super cramped. Like I have plenty of arm room. I have a decent amount of leg room, not a ton. I mean, if you were super tall, it would, it would be a tight squeeze. I'm five, eight and a half ish. And my knees are like right here, but it's not bad. It's, it's a decent amount of room. I can move my arms around. I have head space and things like that. I think one thing that makes this interior feel bigger than it probably should is the fact that we don't have a big thick transmission tunnel right here. This floorboard is really open. I can kick my feet around. I can put stuff down here. When I was on the way here, I stored my backpack and my camera equipment and everything in the passenger seat. I had plenty of room to get that stuff here. It's a very, very nice usable interior for what it is. Probably the most talked about mechanical feature of this car is its five speed automated manual transmission. It has this cute little tiny shifter right here. If I put my hand on top of it, I can pretty much completely obscure it from your view because it's so small. But when this car came out, the reviews about the automated manual were rough. People called it jerky. People said it just, it didn't really shift very well. And I'm very interested to see how that holds up to 2023 standards. Because remember, people were saying that in 2009. So this is the Smart for Two Cabrio. And I feel like if we're gonna take it for a drive, we need to go Cabrio mode here. So our ignition is down here. Let's switch on our accessories. And if I can figure it out, 
Oh. It's the open air, baby. We are going. <laughs> now, if you want to go fully open air, these panels actually come off and there's a dedicated storage spot for them in the back of the car. Folks, it is 90 degrees and 70% humidity in Houston, Texas right now. It is convertible weather. I am just loving it. I stick my hand out of this roof right now and that air is not disgusting at all. It is not hot and wet at all. It's wonderful out here. Anyway, this is an adorable car. This is so fun. And what you notice when you're driving this around is everyone is looking at you. Now, this is gonna happen regardless in a smart car. But as I'm sure you can hear, I'm sure you can hear it, this aftermarket exhaust is so loud. People keep looking at me and I don't know if they're impressed, I don't know if they're puzzled, I don't know if they're horrified, but I love it and I think that's what matters. I'm having the time of my life in this car. It is so fun and so small and so perfect for being in the city. And this exhaust is just ridiculous. I mean, I'm in the tiniest car making the loudest noise. And what's so interesting is when you're actually in a smart for two, at least me, I don't feel like I'm that much smaller than the cars around me. That was actually one of the things I put in my notes before I drove this car was, do you feel like you are significantly smaller than the cars around you? And the answer is, I don't. I'm driving around and people are looking at me and sometimes I forget why they're looking at me. I'm like, what? It's because this car is so small. But like, yes, if I look down and I look at the fact that what is below me and in front of me is so low, yes, I remember that this car is small. But if I'm just like driving and taking in my surroundings and navigating, it feels pretty normal. And if I had to guess, I would guess that this is because this car is just kind of cut off behind me. It's not that the whole car is super shrunk. It is to a degree, but also I'm just kind of missing the back half of the car. And you're not really going to notice that anyway when you're in a normal car. So. I think that is probably part of it, probably part of why I feel so normal in this car, even though everyone is looking at me like, you are so not normal, you are so loud and so small. How does the smallest car make the biggest noise? And you know, when you're just driving around commuting like normal, the transmission is not that distracting, right? So that was those were the big complaints when this car really came out was the transmission is jerky. It goes <clears throat> and it does if you're trying to go fast in this car. If you're honestly just commuting and talking to the person next to you or talking to the people in the screen, it's not that noticeable. It's not that bad, but I will speed up from a stop and show you how jerky it can be. This car sounds so fast and it's so slow. I love it. It's just the weirdest, it's the weirdest juxtaposition. So as you probably saw just then when I was accelerating, the car slowed for a minute, but like a long while. So you can get in an automatic that shifts slowly and it's like, this shifting, this slow shifting is a, it's another level of slow shifting. It's like, it takes so long for this car to put itself in the next gear. It's actually absurd how long it takes. And it'll take you by surprise if you're driving and you just, you catch a gear and it's like, struggling so hard it will take you by surprise you'll be like oh 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 what's happening what's happening the car is not shifting it's just one of those things you get used to you know like this car is infamous for that right this car is infamous for not shifting very well 
and it's quirky it's weird you know i like it i think it's fun the ride quality it jostles with the road now i'm in houston and the roads are very 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 bad constant potholes constant changes in elevation and this car will just over all of them right now here's what's interesting when you have the top down you're actually pretty desensitized to that so the top is down i'm in the open air i'm breathing i'm breathing the nice humidity you know we're having a great time i really actually don't notice the rougher ride quality in this situation because of the fact that i'm exposed to the elements anyway like that's just part of it so i would honestly say if you're gonna drive a smart for two convertible do it in convertible mode now something i notice when driving around in this car is that when I look over my left shoulder, people have pointed out in the comments that I am a looker and I am a looker. I don't like to trust the beeping or anything like that. When I look over my left shoulder, I can't see anything. This pillar back here is massive. It is huge. You can't see anything over there. The rear view mirror on this side, my little side mirror here, actually has this fisheye mirror. When I look in the rear view mirror, I would have my normal blind spots. When I look over my shoulder, I have that huge, huge blind spot. But then I have this tiny, tiny little fisheye mirror, right? And that fisheye mirror alleviates the fact that I can't see anything when I look over my shoulder. Honestly, very useful. Fixed my problem very, very quickly. It's great. I think this is such a tastefully modified little smart for two. It is enjoyable to just drive around in with the top open. Everything is so easy to access and easy to do in this car. Like, I get it. It's fun. It's enjoyable. What a time. So that was the 2009 Smart 42 Cabrio. It is small, it is cute, and because of that, it is very hard to ignore. And if you think this tiny car can fill the giant hole in your heart, this Smart for Two Cabrio is now available on cars and bids. You can check out more photos, see the full spec list, or maybe even bid on it at the link in the description of this video. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.